Welcome back to the Leadership Cheat Code, where we unlock the cheat code to effective leadership. My name is Brian Vaughn, and today I'll be diving into the topic of leading in transitional times. As we navigate the ever-changing landscape of today's business environment, it is crucial for leaders to adapt and inspire their teams. I will discuss the five things that hinder a leader's ability, followed by five effective ways to lead in transitional times. Finally, I'll provide you with a few strategies for each approach that are relevant to today's business environment and culture. So let's get started. As a leader, it's important to recognize the obstacles that can hinder your ability to lead effectively during transitional times. Let's explore the first five. The first obstacle is fear of change. Change can be daunting, and many individuals naturally resist it due to uncertainty and the potential for disruption. Fear of change often stems from the fear of the unknown and the perceived risk associated with it. This fear can hinder a leader's ability to navigate transitional times because they may hesitate to make necessary changes, leading to stagnation and missed opportunities. The second obstacle is lack of communication. Effective communication is vital during transitional periods as it helps align everyone towards a common goal, manage expectations, and keeps everyone informed. However, leaders may face challenges in communication due to various reasons such as information overload or misinterpretation or insufficient communication channels. Without clear and consistent communication, misunderstandings will occur. They can, they will, it's just a natural part of this process. And teams can become disengaged through this process or misalign impeding the overall progress. The third obstacle is resistance to innovation. Transitional times often call for innovation and the exploration of new ideas and approaches. However, some leaders and team members may resist these changes due to a preference for familiar processes and fear of failure. The resistance to innovation can hinder a leader's ability to drive progress and adapt to new market dynamics, leading to missed opportunities and an inability to stay competitive. The fourth obstacle is inflexibility. Inflexibility occurs when leaders adhere rigidly to existing processes, existing structures, or strategy, even when they are no longer effective or relevant. This rigidity can hinder your progress as a leader during these transitional times because it inhibits the ability to pivot quickly, adapt, and to embrace new opportunities. Inflexible leaders may be resistant to change and struggle to respond effectively to shifting market conditions or emerging trends. The fifth obstacle is poor adaptability. Poor adaptability leads to a leader's inability or reluctance to adjust their strategies, their mindset, their behaviors, their actions, their attitudes to align with the changing environment. This can stem from a comfort zone mentality or a preference for stability. Leaders who struggle with adaptability may find it challenging to lead effectively during transitional times as they may be slow to recognize the need for change or fail to proactively address emerging challenges. Now let's shift our focus to the five effective ways to lead in transitional times. Number one is to inspire and empower. During transitional times, it is crucial for leaders to inspire and empower their teams. By providing a clear vision and purpose, leaders can motivate their employees to embrace change and contribute actively to the transition process. Empowering team members to take ownership of their work fosters a sense of ownership and accountability. So here are three strategies or tips for you as leaders to inspire and empower your teams during these transitional times. Number one is to lead by example. One of the most effective ways for you as a leader to inspire and empower your team is lead by example. That is a very critical trait that you as a leader have to demonstrate all the time is leading by example. Show them that you embrace change, that you are exuding positivity, and that you're actively contributing to the transition process. When team members see you, their leader, actively participating and adapting to the changes, they are more likely to follow suit. Demonstrating resilience, adaptability, and a willingness to learn sends a powerful message that encourages your team to do the same. Number two is to encourage innovation and creativity. Transitional times often require new solutions and approaches. Encouraging innovation and creativity within your team can lead to fresh perspectives and problem-solving ideas. Create an environment where team members feel comfortable sharing their innovative ideas without fear of judgment. 
Acknowledge and reward creativity, even if some ideas don't work out as planned. When employees know that their creative contributions are valued, they will feel more empowered to think outside of the box and to take ownership of their work. And number three is to provide growth opportunities. During times of change, people may feel uncertain. They may feel a little bit lost about their roles and the future within their organization. As a leader, you can inspire and empower your team by offering growth opportunities. This can include training programs, uh, workshops, conferences, mentoring sessions, or even stretch assignments that allow employees to develop new skills and expand their knowledge base. By investing in your team's professional development, you as a leader show them that you believe in their potential and are committed to helping them succeed both during the transition and beyond. Strategy number two is to build resilience. Transitional periods can be challenging and uncertain, making resilience a valuable trait for leaders and their teams. Building resilience helps individuals bounce back from setbacks, adapt to change, and to maintain a positive mindset in the face of these challenges. So here are three unique tips to help you and your team to cultivate resilience. Number one is to promote a growth mindset. Encourage a growth mindset within your team. Not a fixed mindset, a growth mindset. A growth mindset is a belief that abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. So when facing challenges, individuals with a growth mindset are more likely to see them as opportunities for learning and development and improvement rather than insurmountable obstacles. As a leader, emphasize the value of learning from failures and setbacks and highlight examples of teams or individuals that have overcome difficulties through perseverance and adaptability. This mindset shift can lead to increase in motivation, resiliency within the face of adversity. And number two is to foster a supportive team culture. Create a supportive and open team culture where individuals feel comfortable discussing their challenges and seeking help when needed. Once again, this is going back to creating that psychologically safe type of environment. Encourage open communication and ensure that team members know that they can rely on each other during these difficult times. Regular check-ins and team building activities can strengthen interpersonal communications and the connections that they have with each other, which builds trust among the team members. When employees feel supported by their colleagues and their leaders, they are more likely to bounce back from setbacks and work together to find solutions. Number three is to practice stress reduction techniques. Teach and promote stress reduction techniques to your team members. Resilience can be bolstered by equipping individuals with effective coping mechanisms for managing stress. Encourage mindfulness practices such as meditation or deep breathing exercises to help individuals stay present and reduce anxiety about uncertain situations. Regular physical exercise can also contribute to stress reduction and enhance overall well-being. So by providing resources and opportunities for stress reduction, you empower your team members to cope better with challenges and also to maintain a positive outlook during these transitional periods. Strategy number three is to foster collaboration. Collaboration plays a vital role in navigating transitional times. By fostering a collaborative environment, leaders can tap into the collective intelligence of their teams, encouraging creativity and also promote innovative solutions. So here are three tips to help you cultivate a collaborative environment. Number one is to promote psychological safety. Psychological safety is the foundation of a collaborative team. It refers to the shared belief that team members can take risks, express their ideas, and voice their concerns without fear of negative consequences and judgment. As a leader, you can promote psychological safety by being approachable, uh, being open to feedback, showing appreciation for diverse perspectives, and refrain from harsh criticism. When team members feel safe to share their thoughts, their ideas, their concerns, their opinions, they are more likely to contribute actively to discussing and engaging in the problem-solving process. Number two is to establish clear goals and a shared purpose. Collaborative efforts are most effective when everyone is working toward a common goal and understands the purpose of their collective work. As a leader, it is essential for you to communicate a clear vision and specific objectives to the team for achievement. Encourage open discussions about these goals, allowing team members to provide input and align their individual aspirations with the overall team objectives. When team members have a shared sense of purpose, they are more motivated to collaborate and to cooperate to achieve success. And number three is to encourage cross-functional collaboration. 
During transitional periods, challenges often arise that require diverse expertise and perspectives. Encourage collaboration across different departments or functional areas within your organization. Facilitate opportunities for team members from various backgrounds to interact, to share knowledge, and to exchange ideas. Cross-functional collaboration not only enhances problem solving, but also fosters a greater understanding of each other's roles and challenges, leading to improved teamwork and innovative solutions. Strategy number four is to communicate transparently. Transparent communication builds trust. It reduces uncertainty and it enables better decision-making during these transitional times. Clear and open communication helps keep the entire organization aligned and engaged. So here are three tips for communicating transparently. Number one is to set clear expectations. During transitional periods, it's crucial to set clear expectations for everyone in the organization in the very beginning. Be upfront about the changes that are happening, the reasons behind these changes, and what the desired outcomes are. This helps employees understand the context and align their efforts accordingly. Avoid using ambiguous language or sugarcoating difficult situations. Don't beat around the bush. Instead, just be honest about the challenges ahead while also highlighting the opportunities for growth. Number two, regularly share updates. Keep the lines of communication open by providing regular updates on the progress of transitions or changes. This can be done through various channels such as team meetings, uh, through newsletter, company emails, or if you're using communication portals uh, and devices like Teams, uh, you can use that type of medium as well. So when you are communicating and keeping your employees up to date about your latest developments, changes, they feel more engaged and they feel like they're part of the decision-making process themselves. Encourage feedback and questions during these updates to address any concerns and to show that their input is valued. And tip number three is to address concerns and feedback proactively. So as a leader, it's essential for you to be approachable and receptive to feedback. Actively seek out concerns and feedback from employees during the transitional changes and be prepared to address them honestly, transparently. If there are uncertainties or misunderstandings, clarify them promptly. When employees see that their concerns are being acknowledged and acted upon, they will feel more comfortable about trusting you as a leader, trusting the change process that is taking place right, via that communication. It builds trust. If you try to hide things, try to be sneaky around the change, around the transition, you're gonna lose all trust. So be open, be transparent. And strategy number five, I will repeat this until the cows come home. It's a lead by example. You as a leader have to lead by example. They're looking to you as a leader to say, hey, how is our leader responding to change? to these transitional times. Leading by example is a powerful way to inspire and motivate others during transitional times. Your actions, your behaviors, your attitudes sets the tone for the entire organization. And when they align with the desired values and goals, it creates a positive ripple effect. So here are three tips for leading by example during transitional times. Number one is to embrace transparency and vulnerability. So during times of change, employees may feel uncertain and anxious about the future. It's the, un it's the fear of the unknown. They're not really sure what's going to happen. So as a leader, it is essential to be transparent about the challenges the organization is facing and the steps being taken to overcome them. Additionally, sharing your own vulnerabilities and acknowledging the difficulties you may be experiencing show that you are human. We as leaders, we're not invincible. We are humans. We're not infallible. We make mistakes. So it shows that you're human. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable in front of others because it helps to foster a sense of empathy within your team. When you lead with transparency and vulnerability, it encourages others to do the same, creating a culture of openness and trust. Tip number two is to demonstrate adaptability and resilience. Transitional periods often involve unexpected obstacles, challenges, and also adjustments. As a leader, it is crucial to demonstrate adaptability and resilience in the face of change. Embrace new ideas and methodologies and be willing to adjust your plans when necessary. By showcasing your ability to handle challenges and adapt to changing circumstances, you inspire confidence in your team and encourage them to embrace change with a positive attitude. And tip number three is to recognize and celebrate efforts. Recognizing and celebrating the efforts of individuals and teams during transitional times can have a significant impact on morale and motivation. 
Acknowledge their hard work, dedication, and achievements, regardless of the outcome. This recognition reinforces the importance of teamwork and encourages others to give their best, knowing that their contributions are valued. Celebrating milestones, no matter how small, also helps maintain a sense of progress and direction during uncertain times. By implementing these strategies, leaders can effectively navigate transitional times and also inspire your team. And there you have it. Five things that can hinder a leader's ability, followed by five effective ways to lead in transitional times, along with some strategies for each approach that are relevant to today's business environment and culture. Remember, leadership in transitional times requires agility, empathy, and a willingness to embrace change. Stay tuned for more leadership insights and strategies to help you navigate the dynamic world of business. If you found this valuable, be sure to like, to share, and to subscribe to our podcast for more leadership content. And as always, keep leading with purpose and making a positive impact. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, to unlock your leadership effectiveness, you must master the cheat code. See you next time. 